In this lecture, we will learn how to add liquid base migrations to our Drop Wizard project. The file with migrations is placed to CRC main resources folder. We create an XML file called migrations.xml. Let's get rid of all the unnecessary stuff from this file and add a database change log tag here. We copy all the name spaces and schemas from LiquidBase documentation, the links to documentation is provided in resources section for this lecture. Change logs contain change sets. A change set is a minimum set of changes applied to your database. For example, it can be a script to create a table or it can be a script to populate a table. It's a good practice to keep change set as lean as possible. The change set tag has two required attributes, author and ID. The ID attribute can be a string describing the set or a value. It should be noted that the order in which change sets are applied is uh, dependent on the order in which they appear in the change log. The ID attribute in no way influences the order execution. Now we create a table using an eponymous tag and let's name the table users. Let's add our first column using a column tag and let's name this column ID, which will be our surrogate key. Now let's specify the data type for this column and it will be big int. Now also let's instruct our database management system to auto increment values in this column. It should be noted that not all database management systems support auto increment. But to cope with this problem, one can use a special attribute for our change set. The dbms attribute is an optional attribute used to specify which uh, type of databases this script can be applied. You can have a change set for databases that support auto increment and in addition you can have a separate script for those databases which do not support this option and you'll use there as a separate mechanism to generate your primary keys. In addition to name and type, you can specify constraints for the column. And let's tell our database management system that this particular column will contain primary keys. Also, let's see that it can contain null values. Now we can leverage the strength of XML and check it with help of external tool. We see that our IDE yells at us. And that's because we forgot to, to close the constraints tag. Let's correct our mistake. Now we can add a second column to our table. This column will store the names of our users. The data type will be varchar and length to 155. We can also add a constraint which tells our database management systems that values in this column cannot be empty. It's 
also a good practice to add comments to our code. And this can be done by using a comment tag in our script. In this tag, we can specify our change set and how it is used. For example, we can type here a script to create user's table. In the next lecture, we will learn how to execute this script. Thank you for watching.